to speak to us by his spirit. Lord, speak to us now through your word. Speak to us in the different situations that each one of us are in right now. Make yourself known to us. Reveal yourself to us. And help us to respond to you in faith and trust and obedience. In your name we pray. Amen. So this week we've been thinking a lot about mission. Uh, We've joined with uh, our mission partners, with uh, John and Hannah Williams, with uh, Adam and Laura Gordon. Uh, We've we've prayed about mission here in Newark. We've prayed about mission in Fernwood. But as we come to the end of this week of prayer for mission and and for for gospel growth through this church, I just want us to to think about... What is our relationship with mission right now? Where are we at um, as individuals in terms of our relationship with mission? Um, I've got four kinds of people in mind this morning um, as as I preach this message. Um, And and you might be one of them. Um, the, the, The first, those who are unengaged and apathetic about mission. Uh, Perhaps you're just not involved in mission at all in in any way and to be quite honest you're not that bothered. And if that is you this morning my prayer is that by the time you leave uh, this place that you want to be engaged in mission. You want to be re-engaged if, if you've got apathetic about mission. Uh, but then others might be willing to be involved in mission, but worried, uh, perhaps a bit nervous about sharing your faith or, or thinking, I can't really you know, come along to some of the things that we, we're doing as a church. I, I don't feel I, I, I'm able to come and talk to people at meeting place or at toddler group or, or uh, to help at kids club and, and explorers or whatever it, it might be. I, I'm, I'm willing, but I just don't have that confidence, that boldness that others just seem to have so naturally. Well, I want you this morning, if that is you, to be emboldened uh, as a result of what we hear this morning. Then others might be engaged and passionate about mission. You're, You're involved in different activities. You're serving in the life of the church. Perhaps you're sharing your faith with friends, family, neighbours, colleagues. And all I want for you simply is to be encouraged, just to keep going in that. But others may have been engaged and passionate, and, 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 and you still are, but a weariness has crept in. Um, and actually, when, when you look at from the outside, those who are engaged and passionate in mission and those who who are still willing to be involved but are weary. They, they, they look the same from the outside, but it's inside uh, where, where the difference is. That energy has gone and, and a weariness has set in. It, life is, is wearying, isn't it? Lots of responsibilities on us. And it might just be that uh, that, that passion that you once had is, is, is diminishing. So again, my prayer for you is that you're being encouraged and that you want to keep going and keep being willing. And also, if if you're not yet a believer and you're not yet part of of the church, you're not yet part of God's people because you don't yet believe in Jesus, then there's something here for you as well. Because this is an account about Jesus revealing himself to his disciples he's making himself known and he's doing this after he has been raised from the dead and the same Jesus who appeared to the disciples is the same Jesus who is alive today and just as he 
made himself known to the disciples and, and revealed himself to them. He wants to reveal himself to you. So if you're not yet a believer, Jesus is alive. He has conquered death. And he wants you to know him. So let's uh, get into the passage. Let, let's think about what Jesus is doing here as he reveals himself. Because he's revealing himself to people who already believe in him. He's revealing himself uh, for the third time now to people who already know that he's alive. So what's his purpose with this third revealing? Well, as he reveals himself, it seems to me that he is reminding his disciples of things that they already know. And often that's what we need in the Christian life. Often what we need to be reminded, what, what we need is not necessarily to learn new things, but to be reminded of the old things that we've been taught in the past. But we need to, to have them brought back to, to our memory. So Jesus is reminding his disciples. And the first thing he reminds them about is his mission. So here we've got seven of the disciples hanging out together in Galilee. It's their old stomping ground. It's where most of them are from. Um, and it's where they had their livelihood when they were fishermen. And Peter decides he's going to go out and fish again. I'm going to go out and fish. And the others say, well, we'll come with you. Uh, we're not told why Peter goes to fish. Maybe he's bored. Maybe he's frustrated. Perhaps he, he needs food. He needs money. We don't know. Maybe he's kind of going back to something comfortable, something that he is familiar to him. We're not told why he goes out and fish. Uh, we are told the result of their fishing. They caught nothing. And this is where Jesus comes in. Although they don't know that it's Jesus to begin with. And Jesus cries out uh, from the shoreline, friends, haven't you caught any fish? And they say, no. I mean, it's probably quite obvious that we haven't caught any fish. So Jesus says, well, why don't you cast your nets on the other side of the boat? And as they do that, they find that there's this huge catch of fish. Where there weren't fish before, now the net is bursting full of fish. But how is this a reminder about mission? Why is a big catch of fish a, a lesson about mission? Well, this is exactly what happened three years earlier when Jesus first called his, his disciples. It's almost a mirror image of what happens in Luke 5. So if you've got a Bible there and you've got John 21 open, um, you might want to flick back to, to Luke 5. And um, there's lots of similarities between Luke 5 and John 21. Both events take place at the Lake of Galilee. Uh, both times the disciples fish all night and catch nothing. On both occasions, the Lord tells them where to put down their nets, and it's followed by a miraculous catch of fish, a huge number of fish. And on both occasions, the big catch of fish is followed by Jesus commissioning Peter and Peter following. Jesus. So Jesus has already made the link between fishing and mission. Uh, he says to Peter uh, back in Luke 5, don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. And I'm sure as that big catch of fish came in uh, in John 21, that they were thinking back three years earlier to what happened in Luke 5. But a lot has happened in that time. A lot can happen in three years, can't it? And in that time, Peter has messed up. Peter has failed big time. He has denied Jesus, not just once, not just twice, but three times. And in public. And I wonder if Peter thought after he denied Jesus, is there still a role for me to play in Jesus' mission? I'm a failure. I've messed up. Does Jesus still want me to be a part of his mission? And 
the answer given by Jesus through this catch of fish is, yes, I still want you to be a fisher of men. We're back on the same beach. It's, it's the same situation. Here's another bumper catch of fish. I want you to be involved in catching people for me. Jesus is reminding Peter about his mission. And Peter still has a role to play in that mission. And I wonder maybe, do we need that reminder? Maybe some of us need, need that reminder this morning. That we have a role to play in Jesus' mission. All of us have a part to play. It might not be the same part. We have different roles. Uh, not all of us might be on the front line sharing our faith. Some of us might be kind of uh, behind the scenes, praying, supporting, giving. Um, we might be the ones who have lots of contact with, with, with people who aren't yet believers. And, and we might invite them to events. We might invite them to, to meet in place or toddler group. And we might not feel um, ourselves that we've got the, 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 the gift or, or, or the confidence or the ability to speak to them about the gospel, but we can introduce them to others who can. We've all got a role to play in mission. Uh, mission is a team game. We don't do it as individuals. We do it as the church. The church has been called by Christ to mission. So we do it together. We've all got a part to play. It might be a different part, but we've all got a part to play. And the reason why Jesus has, has called us as a church to mission, to fish for people, is because people are important to Jesus. Did you notice we are told exactly how many fish are caught here? 153. Why does John record the exact number? I mean, I, I used to be a journalist, and it, you know, when you're reporting something, it's okay if it's a big number just to kind of round it up. He could have just said it was about 150. That would have been fine. That would have been accurate. But no, he, he counts not only the, the 150th fish, but the 151st and the 152nd and the 153rd. There's 153 of them in the net. I wonder if that's a way of, of John saying to us that every fish matters. Every person matters to Christ. And they should matter to us. If we don't share a heart for mission, if we are unengaged and apathetic about mission, if we don't care about lost souls, then we don't share the heart of Jesus. I need to be reminded of this. I need to be reminded of Jesus' mission. But perhaps you do want to be involved. But, but you're worried. You don't feel confident in mission. Well, we need to also be reminded about Jesus' power. And it's an obvious point, really, isn't it? You know, the, there's a miraculous catch of fish. There's 153 fish in the net when there weren't any just a few moments before. It's a miracle because Jesus is powerful. And, and John recognizes that. The, he's the disciple who Jesus loved, who cries out, it is the Lord. John sees the power of Jesus and he recognizes that it's the Lord who's provided the fish. And all his followers have to do is let down the nets. You see, without him, we can do nothing. Without him, we can have all the activities going on during the week. We can invite people to services and events. But if his power is not at work, then our, our labor will be in vain. So we need his power. And that's where our boldness in mission comes from. Not from ourselves, not from the things we know or our ability to, sh to share what we know. 
Our power and our boldness comes from Christ. Do you remember what Jesus said to his disciples as he sent them out on his mission? A promise that he gave to them. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. That's a promise for us as well as we seek to step out in mission, whatever that might look like for us. He's going to be with us. And his power will be with us. He's going to provide the fish. And he'll keep the fish. 153 fish, but the net doesn't break. Jesus will provide the fish and he'll keep them. And he, he's working in power today to provide fish as the church is sent out on Jesus' mission. We might not hear about it in the news but people all around the world in places that we might not expect are coming to faith in Jesus. Jesus is providing the fish. And all that we have to do is lay down the nets and he'll bring them in. So if, if, if you're willing to be involved in mission, but you're worried, then remember Jesus' power. But we don't just see Jesus' power displayed on the beach. We also see his heart displayed. And that's the final reminder about Jesus' heart. Not only does Jesus provide fish, he provides breakfast as well. So there's this church, this uh, charcoal fire burning on the beach as the disciples come to the shore. And Jesus has been busy. He's been preparing a cooked breakfast. There's some fish cooking. There's some bread that's baking. And if you've been out all night working away, you're going to be hungry, aren't you? And I, and I guess the, the smells coming from the, the fire and the food that's cooked was, was, a, was welcome to the disciples after a hard night of fishing. And it, as they have breakfast by the beach, we see Jesus' heart for his disciples. At firstly, Jesus involves the disciples. He says, bring some of the fish that you've just caught. He doesn't say, well, you're a load of rubbish, aren't you? You're a bunch of failures. You've been out fishing all night and you haven't caught anything. I've had to help you out again. I've had to bail you out of your problem." You come and bring the fish that I provided for you because you, you lot are useless. Is that what he says to them? He says, bring some of the fish that you have just caught. Well, technically Jesus caught them. He provided them, but the disciples had to lay down the net still, didn't they? So Jesus values their work. He values what they do. Not only in providing breakfast, but he values their work and our work in mission. And then Jesus invites the disciples. He says, come and have breakfast. It's a lovely invitation. Come and have breakfast. You see, Jesus knows just what his people need. He knows that we are physical beings. We're made of flesh and blood. And sometimes what we really need is a good breakfast. Sometimes a bit of food makes all the difference, doesn't it? And notice how Jesus serves his disciples in verse 13. He takes the bread and he gives it to them. He doesn't just kind of you know, leave the breakfast there and say, you know, help yourself. He gives it to them. He says, let, let me serve you. Let me give you something to eat. Maybe there's an echo here of the supper that they had not long earlier when Jesus gave them bread, having broken it. And he said, this is my body, which is for you. What both meals show us, the meal in the upper room and the meal on the beach, they show us communion with Jesus. They show us renewed fellowship. 
Jesus, inviting his disciples to come and spend time with him, to come and eat at his table. And what it also shows us is that before Jesus sends us on his mission, we need to spend time with him. We need to be with him before we can work for him. Um, right back at the, the start of Jesus' mission, Mark chapter 3, verse 14, uh, we're told that he, he appointed 12 apostles. Uh, and listen to the reason why he appointed them. He appointed them so that they might be with him. And he might send them out to preach and have authority to cast out demons. Notice the order. He appointed them so that, number one, that they might be with him. And then to send them out. But they needed to be with him first. And so do we. So if you're engaged and you're passionate about mission this morning, that's wonderful. But remember, you need to spend time with him. We need to be with him before we can work for him. We need to hear his invitation. Come and have breakfast. Come and spend time with me. And if you've got weary in the work of mission, then you need to hear the same invitation. Come and have breakfast. Come and spend time with me. That is where our passion for mission comes from. We don't work it up ourselves. It comes from spending time with Jesus. Jesus is passionate about mission. Jesus loves people. If we want to love people and be passionate about mission, we need to spend time with Jesus. If we're feeling weary, then come and have breakfast with him and be energized again for his work. That's where our boldness comes from, from spending time with him in his presence. And if we failed in mission, if you look back maybe on the last year or the last several years and you think, actually, I, I haven't been active in mission. If, if you feel like a failure this morning, then we need to be reminded of Jesus' heart for failures. We need to be reminded of how Jesus deals with Simon Peter. He restores him. And that's what Jesus does with failures. He forgives us, he renews us, and he sends us back into his service. Failure is not final with Jesus. So wherever you're at, <laughs> in your relationship with mission this morning or your relationship with Jesus. Then be reminded of who he is. Be reminded of his kind and gentle heart. Listen to his invitation to come and have breakfast. Remember his power. He has the power to provide abundantly for all that we need in mission. And remember Remember his, his work. Remember his priority. His priority is people. People matter to him. Every fish matters. So let's go out in his power. Uh, and let's go and catch those fish that Jesus has provided for us. Amen. Let, let's pray and then we'll close by singing a final song. Father, thank you that you know each of our hearts this morning. Uh, you know where each of us is in our relationship with you and our relationship with the mission that you've called us to. And Lord, I pray that what we've heard will just stay in our minds. You would implant it in our hearts and this word would bear fruit for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Mm -hmm.